Father, we just come to you today, God. <clears throat> Lord, we are worshiping you today, God, from our homes on this Sunday morning. Lord, even though many of us cannot be in the house of God this morning because of what's going on in the world, God, you are always with us. And God, we can make this place that we're at right now, God, your holy habitation. Because you live inside of us, God, we can just praise you today. And you said that you would inhabit the praise of your people, God. So we just ask you to inhabit the praise, God, that is lifted up for you in this home and those homes around the world, God, that are praising you today, God, and lifting you up. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah.
God, we praise you, Jesus.
are, yes you are. We're never alone, never alone. Mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive. Receive it now Here in the presence of the Lord I know your past is broken You can move on, it's over now Here in the presence of the Lord I know your past is broken You can move on, it's over now Here in the presence of the Lord oh, Tired of running, running
receive not because we ask not. So God, let us not be guilty of you not moving because we didn't open our mouth and ask you. God, we just pray right now for every nation in the world, God, that's going through so much. God, we just pray right now for the people of China, God. God, we ask you just to touch them, God. We, Lord, there are a lot of Christian people there, but there are a lot of your people. Whether they're lost or saved, God, you still see your image, God, in them. So, God, we just reach out for them right now and just stand in the gap and ask you just to touch them, God. Lord, to help them through this crisis. God, we just reach out for, for Italy right now where there's been so many deaths. And we ask you, God, just to touch them. Lord, move, God. Move, God. Lord, we know that sickness is in this world, God, because your kingdom is not fully established in this world. There's still another kingdom, the kingdom of the enemy. And because of the guilt, God, of man, because of the sin of man, a long time ago in a garden called Eden, sickness was allowed to come into the world. Death was allowed to come into the world. But God, I remember Goshen. Lord, where even the flies could not touch your people, God, if you didn't allow it. Lord, I know that there'll be some people that are ready to go that died during this pandemic. And God, it's your plan for them to be with you. And God, so be it. But God, I just reach out right now for every purpose. God, in every human being, God, that's not finished their calling, God, that you would just touch them, God. And you would just let them be spared, God. Heal their bodies. God, I, I pray, Lord, that you would help a, <clears throat> either a vaccination to be, uh, a vaccine to be uh, developed even quicker, God, than we expected. And Lord, I know that they're working on it, but God, I pray that these clinical trials that they're doing, God, I pray that they would be successful, God. I pray, God, that there wouldn't be any failure in it, God. And God, if that's not your path for this, then God, then I just pray that you would just allow this, this bacteria, this virus, God, I pray that you would allow this, this virus to begin to mutate more until it is no longer effective in humans, God, and it dies. God, we know that has happened before, Lord. You have allowed that to happen in life. And so, God, if that is your will, then God, we pray for that to happen. God, if it is your will to burn this virus out of the population, then God, let it be so, God, according to your will. But God, I just remember right now, Lord, when Abraham sat on a hill and he looked over the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, and God, he pleaded with you that if there be 50 righteous, 45 righteous, 40 righteous, 35, God, if there be five righteous, that you would spare the city. So God, I pray that you would just look over America right now and over the UK and over, uh, God, over over all the nations of the world and uh, Romania, God, right now and South Korea, Japan, God, Australia, God, all of the nations of of us, uh, Southern America, God, I pray that you would just touch all of the nations, God, of Central America, God. I pray you touch all of Asia and Europe, God. All the nations of Indonesia, God, I pray that you would touch them, Lord, and let them be healed, God, of this. Spare them, Lord. Spare them, God. In Jesus' mighty name. Mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord. Yes, mercy is falling. Falling, lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, yes, mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
Yes, Lord, come and break me apart. I need you. Oh, to open my eyes to see that you're shaping my life. Never ending. 
how you will shine for all the world to see. You are glorious. Yes, you shine, Jesus. Oh, how you shine for all the world to see. And you are glorious. Oh, how you shine, Jesus. Yes, you shine for all the world to see. You are Praise God. Thank you, Lord. As uh, my son <clears throat> gets this other camera redirectioned here, we're going to read a little bit of word. Out of this camera. <clears throat> Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I might want to turn that uh, on silent there. <clears throat> Praise God. Um, Today is March 22nd, 2020. You know, we're, um, we're right in the middle of a, a pandemic. <clears throat> and um, Tyler, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Um, you go in there and get my case for this. So this will hold up for me, please. Praise God. Um, we're right in the middle of a pandemic worldwide. And um, seeing the news and seeing what our economy is doing and seeing the panic in people and really just the <clears throat> just the uncertainty is what is uh, bothering people most. Thank you, son. Bothering people the most because we don't we don't know when this is going to end. We don't know when there's going to be uh, it's going to be over. We don't know when our economy will be back to normal. And most important, we don't know when our lives will be back to normal. And all I can think about with everything that's going on is um, just how fragile that man is. We are, we're so fragile. You know, we, we build up just incredible infrastructure, buildings that can still be standing after a hurricane comes most of them, um, some of the really, really big ones. Um, <clears throat> we have skyscrapers that are over 105 stories, well over 105 stories tall. And we put man on the moon. We've got satellites just going around the globe at 25,000 miles an hour. We've got a space station right now that is just uh, going around the globe and we've got people that are living on there day and night we have uh, right now I'm broadcasting on uh, one phone and I have a recording that's going to be uploaded so this can be anywhere in the world and so it's easy to look at all of the advancements that we have all the technology that we have all the infrastructure that we have and think that wow you know we can make it we can make it on our own but then it just takes something as tiny as a virus that we can't even see, something so tiny, 
and it just completely incapacitates this nation and every other nation. And we find ourselves saying, what power do we have? Uh, I think it's a good time to reflect on everything that's going on and to realize, and some people will and some people won't, that we need God. Sometimes everything that we need is not here on earth, it's from another place. Which is why when Jesus taught us to pray, He taught us to start off saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Heaven is another place. It is far above earth. The third heaven is what the Bible calls it, where the Father dwells. And we need to call into the invisible and ask Him to impact the visible. Because everything that we see around us, all matter, even that star that you see, that the light from that star left that star sometimes uh, several billion years ago, and in some cases several million years ago, um, it just now has reached our eye. When you go outside, you're looking at light that left that star a long time ago, and it's just reached your, your eyes, and you're seeing it. Even that that you're seeing is matter, and matter makes up 5% of all the universe, and yet everything that can be seen came from God who is the unseen. He made everything. He made it all. And so these things that are going on right now just cause us to realize how fragile that we are. I hope it does. It should. And that we need God. We need Him. Um, God has made every day. The Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. So even this day right now, no matter how bad it may seem, God has made this day. So we might as well give it to Him because it's His with our own life. Ecclesiastes 7.14 says, In the day of prosperity, be happy. That's easy, isn't it? In the day of prosperity, be happy. But in the day of adversity, it says to consider. Consider. Right now, we are in a day of adversity because we are facing things that most of us that are alive have, have never, never faced. Um, in the day of adversity, consider that God has made the one as well as the other. God made, he, God made the, the day of adversity, which is today, and He made the, the day of prosperity. Which is, to, which is days we've had in the past. And guess what? It's going to be days that we're going to have in the future. He's made those days. So it says, God has made the one as well as the other so that man will not discover anything that will be after him. That means that your future, that your future, you don't know what is going to lie ahead, but God knows. We don't know what is coming next, do we? We, right now, that's what's scary is the uncertainty. But see, if we can put our trust in God who knows the end from the beginning, then why do we have to worry? We don't. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Lord God, I just pray right now God, I pray about your word, God, that you have given us. And I just tell you, along with those who will be watching this, God, I just make a, a statement, God, that I believe your word. I believe what your word says. God, I trust your word. Lord, you said in your, your word, God, that you watch over it. You watch over your word to perform it in the earth. So, Father God, I ask you, God, to hear your words, not our words, but your words as they come from this page, God, or from this iPad, God. I ask you just to, Lord, remember your word, God, and remember your covenant with your people, God. In Jesus' name, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, says Proverbs 9.10, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. You know, <clears throat> we can have knowledge about something. Someone can tell you, uh, has anybody ever had a like a, something on a, on a stove or something and they say, you know, don't touch this, it's hot. And you ever seen that person touch it and they say, oh, that's hot. And you think, why, why did you do that? Dude? I just told you that it's hot. Uh, I, this happens a lot whenever someone comes to our table 
um, a, a waitress comes to your table and they say, uh, here, this is very hot. And they'll have a, they'll have a little pot holder on their hand. They'll say, this is hot. And then you'll grab it and move it. And sometimes you'll say, ooh, that's hot. Usually I don't, I'll just sit there and keep holding it and let it burn my hands and that like it's not hurting me at all, but <clears throat> it's, you know, it's, it's hot. And so knowledge, knowledge is information that we get. But when we have wisdom, that is knowledge that is applied. Wisdom is knowledge applied. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There are a lot of people that have lost the fear of God because they feel like I can make it on my own. I don't need anything. I can make it on my own. But this situation that we're going through right now, we're crippled. Even if you think that, and I know there's people that think this, that, you know, what's going on right now? This is silly. We should be at work. I don't think it's as big of a deal. Listen, you don't even have control over what our governments are doing. But can I tell you that there's another government that's above your government? And that's the kingdom of God. He's able to keep you even if a government fails you. No matter where you are in the world, His government is able to keep you. His government is able to make a way for you. His government is able to prosper you. His government is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or guess what? Even what you can imagine. He's able to do above that. So imagine in your mind the best scenario and God says, no matter how much you think, I can do better than that. I can do more than that. I can do greater than that. I can do exceedingly abundantly above that. If you trust the Lord. Now, the Bible says, again, I, I know I'm repeating this, but y'all got to realize I'm a teacher, and so we need to have repetition, repetition. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The problem in the, in the world right now is we have a lot of people that have lost their fear of God. They've lost their fear. You know, my, uh, my own son, and uh, I think he's broadcasting this on his Instagram, so, but I'll, I'll mention this. My own son, he... Uh, when he first got behind the wheel of a car, man, he was so careful. I mean, he was driving so careful. He was sitting up straight and had his hands right here. He was just always had right where it needs to go. I mean, doing everything like he's supposed to do. He was staying at the speed limit, turning on. He would come up to a stop sign. He'd stop, full stop, turn the blinker on, and then he would look. I mean, just very careful. <laughs> And uh, I, I knew it was because, you know, he, he was new at driving and me and his mother and his sister were in the car. And of course, he wants to impress us and wants us to see that he's responsible. But after a while, after he made a, a hundred on his driving test at the DMV, after a while, he went from this to, to this and then to this. And then he was listening to music and just he, he was just relaxing. He was getting comfortable. And he thought to himself, you know what, I'm fine, I can do this. And it wasn't long after he was driving on his own that he had an accident. He, <clears throat> not with another vehicle, praise God, and also praise God that he wasn't hurt, but he lost control of his car when he was trying to dodge something on the right side of the road. And, and uh, he, he flew off the, the, the left side and he run into this 9,000 pound rock. And the guy that lived at this house, he knew it was 9,000 pounds because he had just put that rock there two weeks prior. And he pushed that rock back about 12 inches, just to give you an idea of the speed that he was going with his car. And all of a sudden, I remember he called me and I, I saw alerts going off on my phone. And all of a sudden he called me and he said, first thing he said is, Daddy, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Now before, whenever he was doing something that we didn't want him to do, and I'd say, Tyler, you know, slow down he'd say i know daddy i know i know and when he'd, he'd make a turn too quick i'd say tyler that's that's too fast of a turn you're going too fast he said daddy i know i know i know he 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 was losing his fear he was losing his fear that he was driving a a, a, a two three thousand pound vehicle and that at any time something could go wrong and he could lose control and when he lost fear when he lost that fear and he got comfortable he began to lose control of his car in that situation and his car got damaged and then guess what happened? His fear of his parents all of a sudden heightened. And so when he calls me, the first thing he said is, Daddy, I'm, I'm sorry. I said, what's wrong? He said, I, I'm sorry, Daddy, I'm sorry. He was really sorry. 
And he said, I, I wrecked my car. And I said, are you all right? And he said, yes, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just, I, I, he said, I just, I run off the road. I hit a, hit something, I hit a rock on the side of the road. <clears throat> I could hear the fear in his voice. You know, when you come face to face with a situation and you're right in the middle of it and it's beyond change, it's beyond what you can control, <clears throat> you begin to have fear and to have respect for everything that's going on in that situation and you begin to realize how fragile that you are. We need to have that fear of God at all times. The Bible says to let every man figure out his own salvation in fear and trembling. Let him find his own salvation in fear and trembling. And <clears throat> that means that anything that I do, every act, every word, every action, <clears throat> the way that I live my life, what I say, I need to have let everything be under the subjection of God. Just because I'm around my friends, just because I'm at work, just because I'm not at church, no matter where I'm at, God fills all heaven and earth, and so He's always there. So, you know, it's funny how, you know, some people say, well, I won't, you know, I won't, I won't cuss at church, but, you know, I cuss around my friends. I'll have sometimes people will say a cuss word around me, and, and they'll, you know, realize that I'm a pastor, and they'll look to me and say, oh, I'm sorry about that. They don't have to apologize to me. The fact is, if I'm not even around, God is around at all times. God is around no matter where you are. He is, fills all heaven and earth. That's why we need to live uh, according to His Word acceptably, in an honorable way, making sure that what we do is a, um, a good representation for the body of Christ, who, is, who we're supposed to be. And if you say, you know what, I'm lost, I'm not saved right now, so it doesn't matter what I do. Listen, the reason God is after you is because you are His child. You're a lost child right now. But he, when He sees you, He sees His image, Genesis 126. He sees His likeness because you were made out of Him. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You begin to have, show wisdom and demonstrate wisdom when you begin to think, is God happy with this? Would God be happy with this? Is God, is God okay with this? Is He all right with me doing this? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Psalm, Psalm 90 verse 12 says, So teach us, teach us to number our days. Teach us. Think about this. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Mm. God, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. I, I got to read this again. Um, Proverbs 9 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Um, <clears throat> when we have wisdom, when we begin to fear God and to demonstrate wisdom and we begin to apply our hearts unto wisdom because we know that our days are numbered, we know our days are numbered, then we'll realize that I'm not here forever. I'm not going to live forever. I'm not going to be alive forever. My days are limited. You know, the other day I, I had got a, a, a spray bottle out of the kitchen and I was teaching my daughter about how the Bible says that we're a vapor. And uh, the, the version that I was reading from the Bible, it says that we're like a mist. We're here today and gone tomorrow. And so I began to just, I said, all right, here, here you are. You're getting ready to come into this world. You ready? And then I sprayed that bottle and you could just, you could see that mist go out. And all of a sudden I said, all right, here you are. You're getting older. You're getting older. All right, boom, you're dead. And then she, I said, where's it at? She said, I don't see it. And so I sprayed and, and I kept doing this. I was trying to teach her that our life is like that in the eyes of God. It is very short. No matter how old you get, even if you live to 100 years old, our life is still just like a blink in time compared to all of eternity. So what are we doing with our days? How are we spending our days? How are we being effective stewards of your time? See, when I realize that it's not just, it's not my time, that it belongs to God because He owns everything. 
that I'm borrowing this body, I'm borrowing this heart, I'm borrowing everything that I have right now. It all belongs to Him. And so even the day, my time, when I wake up in the morning, it belongs to Him, it's His. Then I'll begin to use it wisely and realize, God, it's all yours. What am I doing with the days that I have right now? Let's look at uh, Jeremiah 2, 2 through 8. <clears throat> Praise God. I apologize. I keep, uh, I keep getting a little distracted. I've got my daughter running around in the background. I can hear her whispering, and so it's just uh, disturbing and gets me off my, my thought process. So we, got, we have a house full here. Uh, Jeremiah 2, 2 through 8 says, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee. He says, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. Think about this, the kindness of thy youth. Do you? When a child is very little, we love children, don't we? It's when they grow up and become rotten adults that they get on our nerves sometimes. But we love children. You know, we, we see the innocence in them because they're so pure. Um, <clears throat> he says, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. How kind a child can be. The love of thine espousals, the kindness of thy youth. Even when you become a new creature in Christ and you get saved, when you first get saved, man, you feel so good. You're crying. You're up there crying at the altar or you're crying with your friend or crying with your mother or your grandmother, your grandmother or wherever you got saved, you're crying with them. And you were just so happy because you're filled with, the, uh, <clears throat> filled with the presence of the Lord and you know that all your sins have been washed away and you feel so great. And so you begin to just hug everybody and love everybody and you begin to wake up and say, how can I be a benefit to others? How can I be a value to others? How can I uh, have an impact on others? What can I do to touch others? I just want to make a difference. And you just, you have so much kindness. And after a while, the, after a while, the enemy can he can begin to wear on you because we, we, we don't have a, a, a bed of roses that's laid before us. We have just a little while before the enemy begins to tempt us and begins to bring uh, trouble on us. And guess what? He's not bringing it on you because um, he had snuck in and, and got to attack you. Anything that ever happens, if it happens, God has allowed it to happen. Think about that. He has allowed it to happen. So if the enemy is ever attacking you, guess what? It's to make you stronger. Let me get back to my point, though. We still need to make sure that we're exercising ourselves and representing ourselves the way that he wants us to. Having that kindness, not just in our youth, not just at the beginning of when we got saved, but continually. It takes discipline. You know, it is really, really easy to be really nice and sweet when everything's going great. But what about when everything isn't going great? What about right now? You know, my son, uh, I keep bringing him up, but he gives me, uh, he's 17 years old, almost 18, and he gives me a lot of material. Um, my son, sometimes he will, I'll t we'll tell him, we'll say, Tyler, we, we need you to help around the house. Can you fold the laundry? And he'll give us a hard time. He's like, oh, I, I just folded laundry. He, I don't know. He, 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 I know he realizes that clothes get dirty, but he don't want to fall sometimes. He's just wanting to do something else. And so we'll have to get him to, you know, ask him again and again, hey, we need you to do this. We need you to do this laundry tonight. And sometimes I'll take it in there, put the basket down. He'll just say, oh. But if he wants something, all of a sudden he is, he'll come get the laundry and he'll fold it and he'll do it perfect. And then he'll come to us and he'll say, is there anything else I can do for you, mother? Anything else I can do for you, father? I mean, but, and I, we immediately, we begin to say, what, what is it that you need? You know, uh, but God wants us to be like that all the time, to have that kind of attitude, to have that kind of response for what it is that he wants us to do. He says here, um, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, and the youth and the love of thine espousals. Espousals is... Uh, when you adopt a cause or a way of life. He says, I remember the love that you had when you adopted the cause or the way of life in being a new creature in Christ. He said, I remember that. He says, 
when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone, excuse me, that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? What he's saying here is that they have come to a time where everything is working out for them. Everything is going great for them. And he's saying that they are not coming to him saying, where are you, Lord? Seeking him still. Because that's exactly what God wants us to do is to continue to seek him. Where is the Lord that brought us out of the land of Egypt? Where is the Lord that delivered us from all of our troubles? It's like we get out of trouble and we say, all right, God, I'm good. I don't need you right now. But as soon as we get in a situation, we begin to just want to run on our own and we begin to drift far from him. And God is saying, no, come back to me. I need to keep you right here with me. Because guess what? The further you get away from God, things happen. Trouble happens. Trials happen. Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt? And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof, but when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. Oh, my goodness. You know, we're seeing that happen right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're seeing that happen right now. What is, you know, what's going on right now is just a, a quick acceleration of what happens when God's kingdom is not over a place. Do you realize that right now, heaven is, is still operating it has existed since before the earth and there's never been sickness there and you know that that's god's desire is for us not to have to even endure sickness but because of the fall of man we have sickness because of the fall of man we have death we have sorrow we have pain but god can keep us and sometimes god he allows he allows things to happen in order for us in order to get our attention I got to go back to this scripture where it says in the day of prosperity be happy but in the day of adversity consider we need right now is is a really good time for us to to begin to consider to consider everything that's going on around us right now and to question do i have my priorities in order has god been first in my life because for a lot of us our jobs have been first in our life Making money has been first in our life. Well, guess what? Who is the one that provided that job? Who is the one that allowed you to wake up in the morning and for your heart to beat and for your lungs to breathe in oxygen so you could have that job? Who was the one that allowed you to open that business and to, uh, to get that position that you got? Who was the one that allowed you to elevate and to move up through the ranks so that you could occupy that spot that you have right now? Who is the one? It's God. God is the provider. And, but yet, instead of serving the source, we end up serving the resource. We've got people who will put off God and put off the presence of God, put off seeking God, put off being in his, in his house, put off making him first because of what they desire and what they want to do and what they think is important. And God is telling us, I want you to make me first in your life. He says, I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof you had everything you needed you had all your your needs supplied but when ye entered ye defiled my land you know there are a lot of segments right now in this nation in the u.s where the presence of god is booming and i know you may say yourself well i'm, I'm not seeing it well it is happening. There are segments and there are houses and there are church plants. There are, there are places where God is moving and, and people are growing. It's happening. But I also see a generation that is has distanced themselves 
from God and they don't know God. They don't know God like you and, and I knew God. They don't know God like our mothers or our grandmothers knew God. They don't know Him that way. <clears throat> They've defiled the land. They've defiled His country. They've moved away from Him. He And made His heritage an abomination. How do you make His heritage an abomination? If God gives you a land and He gives you prosperity and He gives you assets, He gives you property, and then you defile it. You use that vehicle. You use that vehicle not to go to church, but you use that vehicle to, to go somewhere else on Sunday morning. I'm not talking about vacations, but I'm talking about all the time. You know what I'm talking about. And you skip out of, of church to go to work. Now, if you're a nurse, uh, we understand there are certain roles that have to be uh, have to be filled. And if something ever happens to me on a Sunday, I'll be glad that there are nurses there that are working. But even that nurse has to find time to seek God. If she doesn't, she's made her job her God. We have to find time to seek God every day on our own. Not We can't just say, well, I can't go to church. I'm too busy. You've got to find time to seek God. You need to be in the house of God. You need to find time to have prayer and, and, and worship every day and every week. The priest said not, listen to this, even the priest, the priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handle the law, oh man, I feel God so strongly on this. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handle the law. That means those who are responsible for telling us the law, myself included. Uh, I, I'm telling you what the law is. I'm giving you what the word is. But we've got preachers out there right now. They, they handle the law, he says, and they don't know me. Oh, man. God is saying there are those right now, it's their responsibility to read the word to study it and to come to their congregations and to teach them what saith the Lord, what the Word of God says. And it, it, God is so clear in His Word about what is wrong and about what is right, about what is legal and about what is illegal. And yet we have not just people, people get into sin and they try to justify what they're doing, but we have pastors and teachers, we have apostles, we've got leaders out there that are telling people the exact opposite of what God's word is and they're telling them that they're fine. You know why they're doing that? Because their congregations are growing and filling with people that are wanting to come to church and to feel like everything's okay, but they don't want to change their life. They want to continue to sin and to do whatever that they're doing. And they want their pastor to tell them, oh, everything's fine. You can just keep doing what you're doing. God loves you. Listen, God, Jesus told us our, our himself. He said, I come to bring a sword. He said, I come to bring a sword. I've got to make sure that I'm being obedient to Christ in everything that I do. The Bible says, and I quoted this a minute ago, let every man figure out his own salvation in fear and trembling. You do that by fearing God, reading His Word, and if you decide you're going to disobey His Word, you disobey it knowing what you have read, and you're saying, I'm going to disobey this because I, I think that I'm going to lean to my own interpretation. That's what you're doing. But God will be pulling at you and you have to either listen to what he says and believe what his word says or you have to just say, you know what, I'm going to live my own life. And if you do that, guess what? You're doing exactly what Adam did in the garden because God told him, do not eat of this tree. And the day that he ate of it, he declared independence from God's kingdom. And you can go to church, you can shout, you can praise, you can clap your hands all you want. But if you are not being obedient to God, you don't belong to him. The Bible says very clearly, the priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handle the law, they that handle it, that are responsible for it, he says, knew me not. Why do they not know him? Because they're not seeking him and they're not telling the people what it is that he said. God says that there are going to be people that stand before him one day and say, Lord, Lord, did I not do all these wonderful miracles? Did I not work for you? Did I not cast out devils? They're going to say all these things that they did. And remember the word Lord means owner. And he's going to say to them, you are calling me. You say Lord, Lord, which is in effect saying, you call me your owner. But you don't do what I say. So how can you be mine? Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
Even them, he says, I never knew you. <laughs> they that handle the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. Look at that. The pastors, the pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walk, walked after things that do not profit. Going down to verse 11 through 13 of Jeremiah 2, it says, Hath a nation changed their gods, yet, excuse me, which are yet no gods? Saying, have, Has the nation turned to gods and made gods out of things that are not gods? Yes, this nation has done that, and many other nations. He says, But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, verse 12. O ye heavens at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. Listen to this. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. That means they're not drinking from him anymore. They're not drinking from the Lord anymore. They're not going to that well anymore. And they have hewed them out cisterns. But those cisterns are broken cisterns that can hold no water. That means they're drinking from basically shattered pots <laughs> that, can't, that cannot hold water. And they're saying that they're fine. You may be able to go for a little while like that, but eventually a day of reckoning comes. And that's what we're seeing right now. Verse 19 through 21 says, Thine old wickedness, excuse me, thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. How is that possible? Guess what? God has laws that are in place all the, all the time. In fact, let me show you an example. Now, there is a law that is in place right now called gravity. That law is in place, right? What's going to happen when I, when I drop this? When I let it go? I even, I, I even gave it away because I said drop. <clears throat> Why do we say I'm going to drop this? We don't say I'm going to let it go. We say I'm going to drop it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go. We say I'm gonna drop it because we're already speaking what's gonna happen because the law is so consistent. The law is consistent of gravity. When I let this go, look, it just falls to the ground. Now, do I have to sit here and say, when I let you go, you're gonna fall to the ground? Okay. No, it just happens. Why? There's a law in place. Even if you go into space and you are going around the world going around the earth at that 25,000 miles per hour and you are experiencing zero gravity. You've not escaped gravity. Gravity is still in place. The only reason things are just still just floating is because they're falling continuously in the same direction. That's all that's happening. So even they are not really escaping, excuse me, escaping gravity. They're just going so fast that they're in a constant free fall. The law of gravity is still in place. God's laws are always in place. That's why he says, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Because when you begin to disobey God, guess what? You remove yourself from the hedge of his protection, and you open yourself up to attack. You open yourself up to adversity. You open up yourself to have things come against you. That's what's going on. And I'm not even talking about the, the, the coronavirus right now. That's just a, a, a really just a small symptom compared to everything else that is going on all the time. There's things that we're experiencing constantly. There are uh, more people right now that will die today of the flu. Um, well, let's see what the news says. But at the moment, it, it, there will be more people that will die of the flu today than there will this coronavirus unless it really begins to ramp up. But there, the past several days, there have been more people that have died from the flu than have died from the coronavirus. But we've gotten used to it. We've gotten used to that sickness. We've gotten used to the medications that we take. We've gotten used to people dying. See, once something is, we're used to something, we're used to a certain amount of popula the population dying, it becomes normal and we don't allow it to affect us and impact us anymore. Do you realize that there's about 300 and... 300 to 350,000 people that die every single day, even before all of this happened. That happens every single day. 
but yet we keep on going. We keep on moving. We, keep, we, we don't allow it to affect us because we've gotten used to it. But when you begin to have wickedness and you begin to backslide, God will allow new things to happen. He'll allow new attacks on you to come about. And the reason He does it is because He loves you. He wants you to realize how fragile you are. He wants you to turn to Him and to return to Him, to come to Him and just to, to say, God, I need you. I need your kingdom. I need your government over me. I need you, God. That's what He wants because we are His children and He wants to take care of us. He says, Thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God and that my fear is not in thee. Oh, does that not just bring this whole thing together? He says, Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter and that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God and that my fear is not in thee. See, if you're, his fear was in you, guess what? You would have wisdom and you'd be obedient to him. This is what the Lord God of hosts says. Verse 20 of Jeremiah 2. For of old time I have broken thy yoke. He's saying, I've taken that, those shackles off of you. I've burst thy bands. And thou saidst, I will not, Lord, I will not transgress against you anymore because you delivered me. How many times have we ever had something that has happened? And we say, oh God, please help me. And all of a sudden God makes a way and you say, oh Lord, I just thank you, God. I'm gonna, be, I'm, I'm gonna be obedient to you, God. And we will for a little while, but then after a while we begin to drift away. See, it takes a daily work seeking him and being after him. I will not transgress. When upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing a harlot. He says, all the while you're saying this, but you're out there hiding and you're walking away from him. Verse 21, yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? What he's saying is, what I put in the ground was good, but what is growing up right now is not what I made it to be. Oh, God. Going on down to verse 32, it says, Can a maid forget her ornaments, or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Think about that. My people have forgotten me days without number. Psalm 139, verse 16. If you think that your life is, is, is your own, read this. Psalm 139, 16. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And in your book were written all the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. So if you're one of these people that believes that abortion is okay because, oh, well, they weren't alive yet, God says, I beg to differ. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. That means when there isn't even a formed substance yet, God sees it. Because guess what? That body you're in, it's just a body. Who you are is really a spirit that God designed that came out of him and he put inside of that body. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And in your book were written the days that were ordained for me. All the days God has them in his mind when as yet there was not one of them. James 4, 14, this is the scripture I was talking about a moment ago. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. Does anybody know? I don't. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. This coronavirus has, is causing us, hopefully, to begin to reassess. To reassess what is important in our lives? What is important? What are my needs? Everybody's doing that right now. I'm sure uh, a lot of you are looking at your bills and saying, you know what, I thought I needed this, but I don't need it right now. I thought I, I, thought I, was, I, I really had to have this, but you know, now I don't have to have it. I, there's things that we're doing that we've never done. I mean, <clears throat> me and my wife, we've, we, my wife loves everything to be behind a, a cabinet door in the kitchen. 
let me tell you right now i look in the kitchen it's not all behind the cabinet door it's just kind of all over. we've got stuff sitting out because we've got food that we've went and bought because we weren't sure whether we were going to be able to get out of the house in a couple of days. So we went and bought a little bit more food, or at least a week's supply, so we didn't have to worry about it. But we, we begin to question, what are my needs? My, our needs right now are not to make it look pretty in there. My wife will probably get me later about that because she wants everybody to think it looks a certain way all the time. Uh, we're beginning to question and reassess, what do I value? What is really valuable to me? What is really important? We're beginning to question, what can I go without? What, do I, what is not a necessity? What do I not need? One of the things that we need to be reassessing is what do I need? I need the Lord. I need God. I need Him in my life. I need to serve Him because guess what? God is consistent. No matter what the struggle, no matter what you go through, He's always there. And guess what? No matter what happens, one day you're gonna die me too and there's nothing that any government can do there's nothing that any person can do only god can keep me because his government goes beyond the grave and he can keep me psalm 144 verse 4 says man is like a mere breath his days are like a passing shadow what are you doing with the days that he's given you psalm 39 4 Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Man, I've got to read that one more time. Psalm 39, 4. Lord, remember what Lord means, owner. Make me to know mine end. I tell you, God is making people to know their end right now. Make me to know my end. And the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And my final scripture that I want to leave with you today is Psalm 50, verse 15. And if this applies to you, I want you to do this. Psalm 50, verse 15 says, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Father, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we just call out to you in our day of trouble. We ask you, God, Lord, to deliver us, to keep us. God, there are purposes that are in the men and women that are watching this right now, and they're alive and you're not finished with them. God, I just call forth those purposes. I call forth those purposes in the name of Jesus. If you're watching this and you say, you know what, I don't, I don't know what my relationship right now really is like with God, but I don't feel like it's where God wants it to be. If you want to come to know the Lord, you can just pray this prayer right now, and I pray that you'll pray it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I know that you died over 2,000 years ago on a cross, and you laid down your life so that I could be forgiven. You laid down your life so that I could come back into your fold, so that I could be one of your children. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, and I accept the sacrifice that your son Jesus made on the cross, and the stripes that he took, and the blood that he spilled, for the remission of my sins. He took my place so that I would not have to die that death. He paid the price for my sins. And I accept it. Jesus, from this day forward, you are my Lord. You are my owner. You are my God. Come into my heart. Rule and reign over me. 
Not my will, but thine be done. Let my ways be what your ways are. Let my intentions, God, be what your intentions are. God, I pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I just want to say, I know that I can't be perfect, but God, I will do what the Word says and I will strive to be. Every day I will seek to be more and more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, right now the Bible says that there are angels rejoicing in heaven. I thank you for watching today. I hope that you are blessed with the music. I hope that you are blessed with, uh, with this message today. And I just, for me and my family that are here, we just uh, extend a hand to you in prayer and just a, a hand of hope and say, God is with us. Let not your heart be troubled. He will deliver us if we'll just trust in Him. God bless you.